So our first question comes from Fulfelo Paramela. It looks like it is a trick identity question. Right, so it says to us, prove that cos x divided by 1 plus sine x plus 1 plus sine x over cos x is equal to 2 over cos of x. Okay, cool. So how does the identity basically work? Well, this is what I want you to remember. You're given two sides all the time. Your job is simple. You either pick one side, you show that it looks like the other one. More often than not, you find that the more complicated side is always on the left. So you take that and you simplify it until it looks like the right. It's not always going to be the case. Sometimes you'll find that the right hand side is more complicated or there's a lot of things that you can do on it. So you pick that one and you prove that it's equal to the left hand side. But it doesn't always happen like that. It's not always that you'll take the left and show it looks like the right or you'll take the right and show that it looks like the left. Sometimes you pick a side, you simplify it and then you get stuck somewhere. It's not the end of the world, right? If you get stuck and you can see that there's nothing else you can do beyond what you have done, go get the other side. Take the other side, simplify it as well. More often than not, you'll find that they'll both lead you to the same conclusion. If they look the same at the end, it means you have proved your identity. So now I'm looking at this question that we have here. Let's check it. I can notice that on the left-hand side, we've got a lot of juice happening. There's a lot of very exciting things going on, right? There's more that is happening on the left. There's stuff that we can do with what we see on the left-hand side. So I'm going to begin by saying to the examiner, the left-hand side is as good as cos of x all over 1 plus sine of x plus 1 plus sine of x divided by the cos of x. Now, identities are terribly simple, but for some weird reason, grade 11s and grade 12s struggle to work with them. Why? Because they're missing an important element. In grade 11, you were taught the squares identity. The tools that I have, I'm just going to draw your attention to that. I've got the tool that says the sine of x divided by the cos of x is as good as the tan of x. That's the first tool in identities. The second one is the one that says that sine squared of x plus the cos squared of x is as good as 1. And then you can obviously have tools that engage your double angle for sine 2x, which you guys should know how to expand. And the other one is the fact that the double angle of cos expands to three possible versions, right? So these are the things that I'm keeping at the top of my mind as I'm about to solve this. But the biggest thing that you guys always neglect is the algebra component of what is going on in this question, okay? Algebra plays a huge role. In fact, if you had to ask me, I'll tell you that this that we are looking at here is nothing else but fancy algebra, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do here, when I look at this question, I don't see the cheek first. What I see is two fractions that are being added, okay? So what I'm going to simply do here is what I'm looking at looks exactly like A over B added with C over D. So when I've got the situation, what I simply do is I'm just going to go and draw a division line, keep my denominators as denominators. You've got your B here and your D there, okay? Then after that, you cross multiply A times D gives you AD plus B times C gives you BC. So this is basically what happens when you add two fractions. So I'm going to just take that idea and apply it in these two fractions that you are sitting with here. What did I say? I said your denominators remain your denominators, okay? So I've got a division line. Then I've got 1 plus the sine of x times the cosine of x, all right? Those are my denominators. Then I do what? Then I cross multiply. Top times the bottom one. So when you multiply cos and cos, you're going to get cos squared x plus 1 plus sine x times 1 plus sine x when you go this way now, right? That leaves us with 1 plus sine x twice because you're multiplying it by itself twice, okay? Now we need to square that binomial. I end up with cos squared x plus. When you're squaring a binomial grade 12, you guys should know that a plus b squared becomes square the first guy, you get as a squared, multiply them, a times b is ab, then double them. Double the product of the two and then square the last guy, you're going to get b squared. So that's the idea I'm going to engage here. Algebra plays a big role in this. So 1 squared is 1, 1 times sine is sine, double that, you get 2 sine x. And then you square the last one, which is sine, that's going to give you sine squared x. 
everything still divided by 1 plus sine of x multiplied by the cosine of x. Okay, now what do you see on the numerator? There's my square's identity. We know that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Where is it? There's cos squared x. We are adding it with sine squared x. The, the result of that is a 1. So that one, I'm going to put here, there's the one that comes from sine squared plus cos squared. We've got another one here, and that's 2 sine of x is another term that we've got on the numerator. Divided by what you have on the denominator. I hope this is actually making a lot of sense to you guys because it looks very simple to me. The sum of 1 and 1 is 2. You don't need a calculator for that. Then you're going to have 2 sine x divided by 1 plus sine of x times the cosine of x. Now, algebra plays a big role. What do you see on the numerator? I see a common factor, which is 2. So I'm factoring out 2. When you factor out 2, you're left with 1 plus the sine of x. Why? Because 2 times 1 will give you back 2, and then 2 times sine of x will give you back 2 sine of x, divided by 1 plus sine of x, and then this is still multiplied with the cosine of x. What happens now? This guy divides that off. We're just left with a 2 on the numerator and a cos of x on the denominator. Therefore, the left-hand side is definitely equal to the right-hand side. We've just nailed this question.